ready and action. I have a clapboard in my thing over there too. Do you really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> For the party tomorrow. That one. would have been fabulous. <laughs> <clears throat> I haven't done this in a while, so I don't even I don't even know how to do it no more. You know what I'm saying? It's been like a month or whatever since I done done. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Aya. I'm Javada. It's your girl Nod. It's your girl Taylor. You are now listening to the Girlfriends Podcast. <laughs> Been a bad mom, Tatiana. <laughs> Yo! Hey, girlfriend, and welcome to another episode of the Girlfriends Podcast. Today, we have the lovely Nikki Nicole. I'm sure you guys remember her from our Daddy Issues episode. So, Naj, <laughs> I'm so done with you. So, Naj and um, Taylor are not here today. They're actually going to join us tomorrow for another shoot, but we wanted to come to you guys with the awesome topic of toxic moms. So we talked about daddy issues with Nikki, and of course we talked about what it's like not to have a dad. Why are you over here smiling like that? I just be happy. I'm <laughs> so <laughs> I just be happy. That's it. If y'all are just listening to this, I wish y'all could see what Javada looks like right now. I look amazing. <laughs> you do. Thanks. And I can barely see your eyes. <laughs> yeah, I can't even. <laughs> wow. Anyways, back to what back. we're here to talk about yes, today. Right. So we talked about daddy issues with Nikki. We talked about, like, the effects of not having a dad present or having a dad who's, like, present but not really an active father. And we wanted to come to you today to talk about toxic moms and, like, how even having your mom in your life can still be detrimental, especially when they can be negative and they can kind of do things that may um, affect your self-esteem, affect your outlook on life, love, relationships, all that good stuff. So I guess I could start with you, Javada. Like, um, I don't know. Just tell me what you think about it. Uh, um, do you believe it exists? Can you give examples of, of what you think a toxic mom would be like? Um, yes, I think that toxic moms definitely do exist. I think, um, moms can be toxic at different times. Like, yep. it's not to say that she's toxic all the time, but there can be moments when that toxic just, woo, jumps out, you know yep. what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I know from my personal experience, like, 2018 was, like, a good bad year. Mm. I think a lot of different things happened to me, but... I learned that a lot of shit happens to people who can handle it. Yeah. You know, I went, you know, I went through a lot of shit last yeah. year. <laughs> um, oh, but with that being said, as things kind of spiraled, for lack of a better word, um, I attempted to lean on my mom. And I think, I don't know if it was from me being in a place of being really, really vulnerable and her just yeah. not understanding or what, but... When I was going for support, she might as well have been a single crutch that was, like, on a marble. Because mm. the support that I felt there. like I needed was not there. Mm -hmm. um, and we had to have a lot of hard conversations. Um, they were particularly harder for me. I know they were hard for her, too. Um, where I'm an adult now, and there are just certain things that I'm not willing to tolerate from anyone. Yeah. in my life um as far as the standards i set for myself if i'm gonna hold myself to something you better believe you're gonna be held to it too regardless of who you are right. um so those are some difficult conversations that we've had to have and unfortunately i have hurt my mother's feelings but <clears throat> in me expressing myself and being clear um which was difficult for me it was liberating because um, I feel like if you'll stand up to your parents, you'll stand up to anybody. anybody. Yeah, that's true. They're the hardest people to stand up to. And it has been ugh, a task, and they get on my goddamn nerves, and I know I get on theirs. <laughs> but we're getting to a place where we're starting to understand each other more. And that's what I've come to realize, I'm rambling at this point, but I'm going to wrap it up. But what I've definitely come to realize, and I don't know if it's, amongst all black people but from my experience i know i don't know that much about my parents mm. you okay. know i was I second that sitting i was sitting down with my dad which that's another story for another day <laughs> but i was sitting down with him and you know as i sat down with my mom and i was talking to them and i was like 
I don't really know that much about y'all. Yeah. I pray tell this could be a problem with our relationship. Yeah. So um, we're starting from there. Okay. Yeah. Mm. How about you, Nikki? Like that was deep, right? Thanks. For sure. But I um, agree with everything, if not all, most of what you said. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, I guess for you, like, what what would you say a toxic mom looks like? Like, what does she do? What does she say? Like, um, how does she act? Uh, it's so much, so many things I can say. So I, I'm going to use like a celebrity okay, um, okay. mom. Um, per se for for my first example I think that Black China's mom is a very toxic mom yes, mm, yes. Um, I think that the way she carries herself on the internet um, is very, very toxic distasteful. Right. Yeah, it's so distasteful yeah. oh my gosh it's so distasteful and I also think that her approach um, when she's trying to contact her daughter I understand mm-hmm. I don't we don't know what it right. really know what right she puts on social media right but I still don't feel like all of that is necessary for the world to know for right. the world to see the reason why i feel right. like she's toxic and i put her number one on the celebrity mom toxic <laughs> list yeah is because we already know how much backlash black china gets all together as a person people slander her mm-hmm. people demean her i mean defamation of character yeah. oh my gosh like and, and she does some of the stuff you know she already um admitted to but a lot of her right. um yeah a lot of her wrongdoings are a lot of the reason why her um her image has been drugged through the mud. Yeah. But her mom also sees that because she's also in the media. And, right. the, and her mom has a, a big following based on Instagram, too. So you see what people say about your daughter. So why would you add on to right. the right. the mishap or the havoc she's going on, have going right. on in life? I just feel like her mom just adds on to it. And so now, like, anytime I see Black China, I just, when I see her Instagram or see her post stuff, I'm just like, I cannot believe that's her mom. Like, right. And First I, of all, I wish my mom would be you grown know, as hell acting full that. on Instagram. I'm saying, like, you don't, some of the stuff is just so unnecessary. Like, she gets on live and starts twerking. That is wild. Just doing the mom. most. I mean, just doing the most. Just doing, And I can't say, people would, I don't think that Kris Jenner is a toxic mom. Me either. Because yeah. I feel like she's, she helps her, her kids um, progress in life. And she, she took allows their them managers. To all. Right. Yes, she's Thank been you. their managers. She allows them to own their mistakes and and Flip grow it from a it. Yeah, turn a negative to a positive. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, y'all can't nobody come come at Chris for at all for how she is. I stand well. the Kardashians personally. I stand Chris. Chris. No, Jenner. I. They have very strong family values, and I respect that. I don't believe so, but oh. That's another topic, but right. yeah, I mean, <laughs> just so. I mean, just bringing it back yeah. though to like they do toxic stick together. Moms. They I can't do say stick that. together, they, and that's yeah. what's important. So, I think in regards to toxic moms, just like in for family in general, people just kind of have this misconception that if someone is related to you by blood, that they are loyal, that they are caring, Ooh, that yeah, and you know, learn like that the they'll that always true, have your honey. back. And that ain't even true. I think you know, right? Like you said, like it. At the end of the day, like you know, you expect those things from the people that are your blood, but that's not always the case, right? And it goes the same for a mom. And I think just because someone pro- provides financially for you doesn't necessarily mean that they are a good mom. parent, Thank you. provider. Is, there's a big difference, especially when right. you have daughters. Like, right. you can learn a lot from your dad as yep. a daughter, but you can learn a lot from your mom on right. a whole other level. And just because you provide for your child um, financially, uh, young women or young adults like myself need more than that. And if you weren't giving that to me as a child, I'm probably not going to be expecting it as an adult, but I probably still feel that void as yeah. an adult. Right. And so, like, in terms of people who may provide financially, but still, like, and I think when you think about these storylines where it has, like, the rich kid who has, like, the huge house, they get everything they want, but they're missing that emotional piece from their parent, I think a lot of times parents are so focused on establishing security that they tend to neglect their children emotionally. Like, yeah, I need to have those conversations with my mom, or I, I want to feel like, and I'll just give a person saying, I think I have an awesome mom, but one thing that I'm learning in therapy is that, 
just because she's my mom, it doesn't mean I have to share everything with her. Right. Because she was born in a different time frame, they're so focused on being secure that they will stay in a job that they absolutely hate for their entire life. Can't if that means relate. putting bread on the table. Mm-hmm. And, like, um, love her to death, mom. Please don't hate me for this. But I think, she has, I, feel too. <laughs> I think she has that mindset, though. And when I try to tell her, like, this job is not satisfying for me, like, I really have this urge to just kind of, like, quit and just do hair and make money or pick up a part-time job you and know what I focus think on building my brand, she is, like, she um, she kind of tries to talk me out of it. And my therapist is, like, you know, just because she's your mom doesn't necessarily mean that everything she says is right Mm -hmm. and you have to think for yourself and not feel bad if your mom disagrees with it so i don't know but (laughs) we still got a little bit of time okay before we get to a break well what i was gonna say for that part i think um something that can go back to parenting i have two little nuggets here one how you're saying like your mom doesn't understand your I guess your turmoil with your employment situation. I think it's just like our generation. So I think millennials and generation Z, we're more of a creative generation. Yeah. And I think that we've been exposed to creativity and we're more express. We're able to express it more, but they weren't brought up that way. So they don't understand it. And then I feel like, creativity and expression is so like squandered because it's still very new to like free think and be creative so there's not a lot of people offering guidance in that department yeah so a lot of people don't understand what's going on which i think creates tension right and since we're talking about toxic mothers something that i will say too so as far as like you not being able to have that same um understanding or that alignment with your mom at all times i think an issue that i feel i may have run in with my mom is okay yes if i have this issue or i operate from this creative space and i'm seeking guidance from my mother and i can't get the guidance that i'm looking for because we just can't you know seem to connect if i go and seek that guidance from someone else yeah sometimes i feel like my mom tends to get jealous get upset about it yeah and it's like it's just it's weird Like a, um, somebody in general, whether it was a family member or even someone outside, like let's say for yeah. instance, like I know someone who's versed in something specific, and then maybe I go seek advice from them before I go to my mom. I feel like my mom would feel away about that. Mm. It's very weird. It but, is weird. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna cut to a short big break, but when we get back, we're gonna talk more about toxic moms, and then you know we like to get into our pop culture tea. So stay tuned, and thank you for listening. Welcome back. 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 Okay. Are you remember this? Who's the new Miss Um Mr. Kaiser? No, him too. But when we were at cheerleaders at Knox, what's her name? Ooh. Our cheerleading coach that used to be like this. Oh. That means right. That means was, run. Was it the big one? Yep. Ooh, I, don't her name. I don't remember her she name. Was huge. I hope you never watched this video. You was you, you was oh cool my you were, god. And that's how I feel about you, actually. <gasps> <laughs> She's kidding. Yeah. Ooh, that hoe was so mean. She was mean though. That she really was, was mean. So no, for real. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm with you now. <laughs> no, you guys. We were talking about toxic mothers. Okay. Um. You know, there's just <laughs> <laughs> been a bad mom, Tatiana. <laughs> Yo, no, like, that's, that's gonna, gonna, that's, gonna make you a no, bad mom. That's gonna play at the beginning of this episode with the like bomb drops, like <laughs> 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 yeah, with the horns. There we go. <laughs> no, yeah, we've been talking about toxic moms. Yes, Nikki gave a great example. She said, "Black China's mom." I'm sorry, but a mom sitting on live calling her mom, her daughter all kinds of bitches and stuff. Yeah, like, that's outrageous. Girl, just doing the that's most. Terrible. I mean, but Sometimes. is that just that's just just as bad as some moms who sit back and talk about their children with that same verbiage? You yeah, know what I'm saying. But it's yeah. even worse to get on. You have a. She I has mean, like millions I of think followers. it's all the same. It's all the same. But right. I'm just gonna point her out because she's in the spotlight more. 
I mean, I'm just saying your daughter's already being slandered, right? For who she is as a person, you just right. add flames. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. Add flames to the fire. Yeah, right. That's so true. And um, recently on Twitter, y'all gotta get on Twitter. If y'all are not Twitter on Twitter, so what are you lit. doing? First of all, you not on Twitter, you late because all the memes I be posting on Facebook. Personally, and I would like to go back to the old Twitter the where old we Twitter dedicate tweets there. to people where you can and what? we tweet what we're listening to. Yeah, and, and we, we, we get put, people put in Twitter jail. Personally, yeah. I would like to go back to. And one of my Twitter followers days. is so far. So Oops, tweet yes, each other. Let's go one back to hashtag Oomph. People don't subtweet each other no I more. I was so like. upset when people would hashtag Oomph. I was like, well, who is Oomph? And one so of my followers. And someone was like, well, I was like, oh! Oomph. One of my followers is <laughs> so fine. What am I? We should bring we, it back. Yes, we, we need, need to, to bring, bring it back. Because old Twitter is the way. Matter of fact, Twitter is the way right now. Yeah, that's true. Except your timeline like, isn't in a college quarter. Before y'all. Yep. We see me a month before y'all. Exactly. So on Twitter <laughs> is where I saw this little kid had written a letter to, I think it was their mom, and was pretty much saying. I think that, I was talking about. Yeah, they said they they um, didn't like their mom using bad words, like calling them stupid. Oh, and they said, God. and I quote, even though I deserve it. No, baby, you do right. not deserve your mom, your mom calling you yeah. stupid and calling you bad words and i think that is an example of a toxic mom because that is already establishing low self-esteem <laughs> sorry i <laughs> but i just thought about something <laughs> what whoa, whoa, whoa. what whoa, this whoa, is time out, we yeah because what we have some double standards y'all okay the reason up? why i'm busting out laughing is because <laughs> liberian parents be quick because <laughs> Look, look, <laughs> look. I don't want to hear it. God, look, God assigned specific <laughs> children to West African parents. Ooh, Jesus, <laughs> man, some of y'all won't be able to handle it. Oh, my God. Because Liberians be say, you stupid. You stupid, God. You stupid. <laughs> Yeah, so, okay. Yeah, I mean, but that's just addressing something within our own community, too. That's true. <laughs> I am weak I mean, y'all granted, childish. <laughs> I mean, granted, growing up, being called a stupid girl did not, <laughs> did not make me feel like I was <laughs> truly a stupid girl, but... <laughs> But I mean, <laughs> like, <laughs> woo, woo, we just have. Oh, Jesus, no, her mom always wants to call somebody a goat. <laughs> I still do not think it's healthy. How would you feel if your mom called you a stupid goat today? <laughs> it's a Liberian thing, so it doesn't even. I'm just used to it by this time. By this time, so. it doesn't hurt. Because at this point, whatever, just don't hit me. Yeah. <laughs> At this point, you can cover what you want. <laughs> right. Tell me you'll kick my ass from here to Kingdom Come. And That's okay. You. Yes. Like literally, I will kick you. That's what they would yeah. Liberian say. Okay, so yeah, there's some toxicity <laughs> within the West African community um, as you think? well. Um, but we're here to say it's not okay. <laughs> <laughs> I probably will go home this weekend and be called a stupid goat, but it is okay. Um, but yeah, it was really sad going back to that. Just seeing how much that impacted that little kid's self-esteem to where he or she thought they deserved to be called stupid. Right. Y'all got to do better. Yeah, I agree. Like, come on now. And Naj was talking about it. And she was talking about how there are some moms, you know, when Mother's Day come, they kind of, especially the single mothers, they try to shit on mm-hmm. the dads that day and talk about all the things they do for their, their kid. But once again, just because you're financially providing for your child does not right. mean that you're a good mom. Because if you're not sitting there, like, <clears throat> actually bonding with your child. Right. Doing homework with them. Right. Like, mm-hmm. um... Making sure you're like there at their school events, right? Stuff like that exactly. matter. Like they, it matters, especially to little kids, right? right. And if you, you know? can't, it, and I think a lot of times, like when things happen to children, I'll take this on a deeper level. When things happen to children, and and parents are like, "Why didn't you tell me?" Because you didn't create an environment for them to feel comfortable to talk to you. Agree. Um, so once again, mm-hmm. fulfilling that emotional aspect. If every time your kid tries to come to you, you're like, "Oh, go away! I'm tired." Or Ooh, shut up, or keep child. it down, or go to your room. You're not creating a healthy environment mm-hmm. for them to feel like they can talk to you and express things to you and talk about their concerns. Like, so if something is happening to them, if they're getting bullied in school or anything, they're not going to want to talk to you, right? Because they're going to expect you to say, "Oh, shut up, go to your room," right? Or there's sometimes the moms where, because I know, <clears throat> excuse me, 
my I, I would be scared to tell my mom certain things that happen at school because she would try to come to the school and Ooh. turn up so you know sometimes it's that yeah. way too that's toxic too mm-hmm. sometimes you gotta lead by example don't be coming to the school turning up so if you expect your child to behave a certain way and that's one thing that really gets me when you see your child acting out and instead of trying to identify the source you choose to punish them Discipline, even right. even more like if your child is going to school bullying people or getting in fights like acting out you need to identify where that is coming from and nine times out of ten it's coming from home yeah um so if you have a kid who's like ryan <clears throat> You might want to do some self reflecting and, and figure out what exactly you're doing to contribute to that. Mm-hmm. Oh, let me say, let me chime in on that just yes. to piggyback off what you said about the bullying thing. Mm-hmm. I found out that some kids, and this is from me having like teacher friends, like some of my friends are teachers, and I work with a lot of older women. Yeah, I am the youngest person at my job, so I get a lot of like gems from my coworkers. I love it. They're like, yeah, oh my god. But anyway, what so do you a lot call them, them? Do they know what you call them? Yes. They, they they are so okay with I it. love their name. I call them the OLGs. The old lady gang. Yep. <laughs> I have the OLGs and I have the young OLGs. The young OLGs are the 30 through 40 age range. Mm-hmm. And the OLGs is the 50 through 60 age range. Yeah. So, yeah. But anyway, so they, were, they tell me, like, stories about their kids. Because most of them have at least, like, three kids. I think yeah. some of them have, like, one. But most of them have, like, three. So they're, like, um, yeah, um their daughters or their kids will get bullied well we're getting bullied in school because Mm -hmm. my co-workers i mean they don't believe in buying like expensive shoes for them for their kids and stuff like that um they believe like it's it's not it's it's something that's not worth it it. i'm not gonna spend two hundred dollars on jordan's or jordan's or something so Oh, so My, they get the bobos. Yeah, so they get the bobos, and not and you know, you do got. Do know what bobos? Do people know what bobos are now? I mean, bobos like, are like black off, people know what bobos are. Yeah, okay. you know the funny, funny. So anyway, they send their kids to school with the funny, funny shoes, right? And the kids pick on them, mm-hmm. or that's that's how they're getting bullied. Or there's another coworker that I have that she's bu- she bullies other people because her daughter bullies other gr- another girl in school because she's jealous of the other little girl mm. because this little girl mom buys her all this nice stuff and right. her mom buys her yeah the right. off brand, off brand of whatever she has so or she gets to do this and gets to do that and my coworker is pretty strict on her kids so she's right. like oh you're not doing mm. that so, so it, it she bullies up. the other girl so she had to go to the school and have a conference i'm like okay so it's bullying goes both ways either right. you're bullying me because you're jealous of me or i'm bullying you because i'm jealous of you it's just right. a mess yeah. I, I mean i don't even it's it, all displaced emotions really because, because like, they what can't do do? have those what conversations mm-hmm. it starts at home like yes. mom I'm going to bully Amber because you keep buying me bubbles. Or, Mom, I would really, really just like one pair of Jordans for my birthday. You know, like, the reason why, like, well, school is hard for me because they pick on me about my clothes. I think if my child came to me and said that, I'd be like, let's go shopping. Right. Because you can't go to a school and change the kid, the, the minds of kids. But if I know going and picking up a nice pair of shoes or a really cool backpack. Will take the stress off. Well, right. right. I will do that. Yo, what if when we get older? Like, I'm so happy I'm a millennial right now. Yeah. I just feel like millennials are like, like we, we are like climbing the top. I feel yeah. like. As just all together. I just, I just so happy I'm a millennial and I'm growing up in this time frame. Yeah. yeah. Two reasons. One. Because, like I said, I work with OLGs. Mm-hmm. Y'all, they will call my, my desk and tell me to come show them how to screenshot something on their phone. Oh, wow. oh my God. Or they'll say, can you show me how I save something to my desktop? I'm like, what? Oh my God. what world it's living a simple thing. I mean, oh, and then this one lady, she was like, my phone is saying that I need to... um." No, I need to do a software update. She has an iPhone. Oh my gosh! And she doesn't know what she she's doesn't doing, know how to does do she? it. And she's like, I don't know. What, maybe it's deleting my pictures or something. Like that's not a software update. Ooh, but whatever. Lord. So it's just like I'm just so happy that I'm I'm a millennial because it's just like the world is transitioning so yes. much, and these old, old people are not keeping up. No. But another reason why I'm happy that I'm a millennial is because I feel like I'm gonna be more in tune with my kids. Like yes. we I got feel the like, best of both. Yeah, worlds, I think honestly. because like when I was growing up, it was. We didn't have cell phones and we didn't have like right. you know cash app. It was like Western Union. 
And mm-hmm. like we didn't have where when we went to the concerts, we weren't up there with our phones right. at concerts. We, just we literally were enjoying the moment. Yeah. And so now I had and I also have the this world where everything is technology based yeah right oh shout out to close case by the way love them <laughs> get yours now close yeah, case. case on instagram um but yeah so and i feel like when i have kids now if well not now but you'll since be better I'm, equipped to understand yeah and i think i'm gonna going know through. like a lot of i think i'm gonna relate to a lot of what my yeah. kids Oh yeah. yeah, are going through or sure. even if they don't want to say it, I feel like I have enough You'll experience know. now. I can initiate a lot of things right with my kids. Okay, so that was great. Let us cut to one more break. When we get back, we will wrap up with our pop culture tea. Thank you for hanging in with us and stay tuned. Lovelace, we are back. <laughs> I don't know what all these accents are today, but okay. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Hey guys, we are back. Once again, this is the Girlfriends Podcast, but you guys know that already. If you're on YouTube, I'm so sorry if you keep hearing me say that over and over again. We also go on air. So we have pre-recordings that go on air, so they can only hear us. They can't see us like you guys have the, you know, privilege to. <laughs> so I just have to say that. Um, but yeah, we're back. We wanted to roll into pop culture tea, and we have a little surprise for you at the end as well. Um, I wanted to talk about this week the passing of John Singleton. Rest in peace. Yes. He was an awesome director. Correct. Yes, filmmaker. Filmmaker, director. Um, he created Baby Boy, Boys in the Hood, Hustle and Flow, and Higher Learning, my personal favorite. Oh my gosh. Oh, sorry, you guys. He's so gay. Look, we got to get places on time. We got to be on the I 10 by 10. I 10 by 10. Facts, facts, facts. So, yes, rest in peace, John Singleton. It's so unfortunate because he was so young. Yes. He was so young. Um, when I say young, like that, his fifties, he still has so much life to live. This was like his his, he was in he was supposed to be experiencing his midlife crisis, right? right now. Um, so it's really unfortunate. And Javada made a good point that this is something that seems consistent within the black community. Yes. No, I actually had a great uncle pass away in October from a stroke. Mm. Um, so he was able to live a full life. He was in the Dominican Republic and. Um, I think for his last birthday, they got him like strippers or oh something like gosh. that. You know, so he had a really fun That's time. Good. But it was a little bit heavy on my heart to see that, you know, John Singleton had yeah. passed away. Well, first that he had had the massive stroke, then he was in a coma, and right. then they were pulling the plug. And I was like, oh, this is all too relatable. Yes, it's um, so heavy. Yeah, so it's very, very scary. So black men, take care of yourselves. Please take care of yourselves. Take care of yourselves. I'm going to say that again. And I know, like, a lot, I, I've, I've heard too many black men say things like, oh, I don't like to go to the doctor. Right. But, I mean, it's necessary. And if you're not going to the doctor, at least try to look at Take care of yourself. Holistic practices. Make sure you're doing something to keep your health in tip-top shape. Absolutely. So, on to something, I won't say positive because there's nothing positive about it. I listen to blogger Tasha K. Some people love Tasha K. Some people hate Tasha K. I like her. I'm still, I'm still figuring her out. But from what I see, see, she seems really genuine, and I appreciate that about her. Pretty much, this is the story. Uh, she encountered a woman who pretty much grew up with Ashanti's mom and dad. It all started when she was a child. I'm not sure how old. I don't want to get it wrong. Around five, six. She started um, attending Ashanti's mom's dance class. And Ashanti's dad, who at the time was Ashanti's mom's boyfriend, came all the time. And she said she noticed he took a special liking to the younger girls. Well, this turned into, his name is Kincaid. This turned into Kincaid, like, starting to kind of, like, set her on his lap. Just kind of, like, it went from that to him picking her up for dance class 
taking her to it sounds like abducted in plain sight a little bit that's exactly i'm it's so funny you say that because that's exactly what i was thinking mm. so essentially what this man was doing is she had a big family she was like one of many kids i don't know like six seven kids and she kind of felt neglected at home and what this man was doing was he would t- come and pick her up or he would claim like he's taking her to dance practice or whatever and he would take her to his home and rape her and you know as a child she didn't really understand it she didn't know what was going on and at 11 years old she had her first abortion because he had impregnated her at 11 years old made her take um someone's id and act as if she were them so that they would administer the abortion oh my god and i think she said that was like one of two or three abortions that she experienced between 11 and 15 all from her being impregnated by this man and she's now in her 50s and so the question is yes so the question is you know everyone i'm sure is wondering is like why now this woman has been through a lot um she got she was on drugs at one point in her life trying to cope with things she got cancer and she realized now in her older age like it's affected her so much that for years she's been um, going to therapy for it. And she just, she wanted to free herself of it before passing. And she allowed Tasha K to share her story on her platform because Tasha K has such a huge following. And she's seen what Tasha K's reporting has done for the R. Kelly situation. Mm-hmm. And so she wanted to free herself because she's tried to talk about it with others. And a lot of people don't don't want to hear her. They don't believe it. Right. Um, so shout out to Tasha K for giving her that platform. Because I can only imagine what that's like. For her to be in her 50s and still like be breaking down in tears. Just recalling those moments. You just... Trauma. Like, uh, yes, as <clears throat> as someone who uh, has you know experienced like sexual trauma, like I could feel the yeah. I could feel the pain in her voice. I could understand. I know she's not lying, and so, oh, it's just so disgusting to me. It makes me so afraid to have kids, honestly, because it's like I I would want to I want to be able to protect my kids without kind of like putting a leash on them. It's like how do you do that? Yeah. Um, so that was pop culture tea. I don't really have any type. You know, usually we talk about people who doing dumb shit. And, you know, we have our little comments. <laughs> no, nah, 2019, it. it's been a lot of serious shit happening. We can't it really has. talk about dumb shit. No more. Right. So. But, uh, you know, I wanted to share that with you, too, because something amazing is about to happen. Something amazing coming from, like, two amazing people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, you guys. No, but something great is about to happen. Um, I will let Javada tell you what it is. It has a lot to do with, you know, it, it relates a lot to pop culture tea, but it, it has a great twist to it. So I'm going to let you tell the audience. You're going to let me drive the boat. I'm going to let her drive the boat. I told her. I told her. I was like, you drive the boat. You driving the boat. Okay. You know, I'm just here. Let me drive the boat. Okay. So I have definitely felt like. As Girlfriends Podcasts, we need maybe an expansion of the platform. So, I and I are both located in Raleigh. And I think it's just high time that she and I maybe dig a little bit deeper. So, what we're going to be doing is soon we'll be introducing the wrap-up, which is going to be a live show broadcasting on 72.9 The Voice. Sunday evenings, we'll give you specific time later when I'm ready for you to know. Yep. But what we're going to do is we're going to be an entertainment and pop culture wrap up, but we're going to have meaningful conversations around what's going on. So, for instance, now we're talking about the situation with this young lady and Ashanti's dad. Yes. Um, Or, for instance, if we're talking about situations like John Singleton, what we'll do is we'll kind of have these real life scenarios based on our experience to support what's going on in entertainment. Because I think... You know, as we hear these headlines and we listen to the media, we're desensitized to things a lot. And I think we need to know that, like, yes, these are things that are happening for entertainment, but they are also happening just around the riverbend. Right. 
facts. So I'm super excited. This will take place, like she said, at 72.9 yeah. The Voice. We're going to have fun, too. We're going to have fun, fun. Yeah. I'm so excited. I'm excited, too. It's going to be great. Yep. We'll let you guys know when it drops. Um, but for now, follow us on... Is it the wrap up nine one nine? It's just wrap up nine one nine on Instagram. There's a Facebook page too. There's nothing on it right now, but just follow us. Just follow us, so when we come in, you can see it. Turn your notifications on, so when it drops, you're the first to see it. You know what I mean? Straight like that. And I know you guys are wondering what these two things are. If you don't know, because I I feel like I don't talk about it. You enough. don't. I probably have never mentioned it at all on here, which is pretty sad. But I own my own hair care line. All natural handmade products. These two things that you're seeing here are my shampooing. So this is a two-in-one hair cleanser. It's a shampoo and conditioner all in one. This is the 16 ounce. This is the eight ounce. Once again, all natural. I've gotten good reviews about it because I wanted to create a formula that was tailored to type four hair. Um, it's so frustrating when it comes to wash day because it seems like you have to dedicate hours to your wash day with, you know, pre-pooing and then washing and then detangling and styling. And literally what this process does, um, this, this formula does is cut your process in half. Like Which literally when you wash your hair butter like you can detangle your hair with your fingers so if you're interested in this go to www.elele.com that is e-l-l-e-l-e-i.com okay so once again thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode look out for the wrap up and i hope you guys have a great rest of your day bye